the bottom line is ultrasound is totally safe. It's sound waves. It's been used for over 50 years and probably, well, most people in the room. Um, and, uh, and there's been no proven negative side effects to the technology. It's, it's portable and it's, it's cheap once you get the machine. The biggest barrier is learning how to use it. And, uh, and uh, I've been doing it for over 15 years. And, uh, but once you, once you get the bug, you never go back. And uh, so, so my goal for this talk is to kind of get you interested. Maybe you'd want to pick up an ultrasound machine and learn a little bit. It doesn't take much. It's totally safe. And for the nurses that may be doing inpatient care, et cetera, even looking at an empty bladder just to see if they fully emptied, it, that, it doesn't, that's not rocket science. That's a very quick and easy thing to do. Uh, so, so let me talk a little bit about uh, spine anatomy. So I have a little model here. So excuse me, my, my uh, Samsung watch is my Alzheimer mother calling me right now. <laughs> yeah. So this, this is a vertebral, lumbar vertebral body. Okay, this is the anatomy. Spinous process, uh, transverse process out there. This is the central canal. These, my little shoulder pads, are the facet joints. Okay, remember this picture because when I show you the ultrasound anatomy, it's going to look very weird. But this is what it's going to look like. We're going to be standing straight down on top of my head, and that's what it's going to look like. So you have to have a little imagination when you use ultrasound. You have to kind of get your eyes used to seeing the black and white, and also trying to remember what the anatomy looks like. So transverse process, spinous process, facet joints, lamina, should be my traps if I was a football player. And, uh, and then the, the central canal is right here. Okay, that's where the nerves run. The, the uh, discs and the vertebrae will be sitting right where my belly is, okay? That's the, that's the anatomy that we'll, that we'll look at today. And so, so let me add, uh, uh, and then the, the, um, the, the use, let me just quickly go over the indications for ultrasound in the spine. The spine is not ideal for ultrasound because it's got a lot of curvy bones. Ultrasound works on sound waves. So if I talk to that wall, it's going to echo back to me and I'll hear it and I'll, and I'll pick it up on the ultrasound machine. If I go into the corner, it's going to bounce around and it'll, it, it, the signal gets kind of uh, attenuated and, and muted. So because the spine has a lot of curvy bones, it's not ideal. But I have made diagnoses that were otherwise not identifiable because of ultrasound. Um, one, because you can see, you can use it on metal hardware that uh, MRI will scatter. The CT scan can show the metal hardware, but it doesn't always show the soft tissue that well. So this is a nice compromise. And the other use for ultrasound is that it's dynamic. You can push on it, you can have people move, and you can see things uh, in real time. So um, the, uh, there are people who do injections with, with ultrasound guidance, and uh, the, they can be very tricky when, if you're doing anything around the nerves. But the sacroiliac joint, which is what I'll show today, um, is actually quite safe. So if anybody is, does have an interest in ultrasound, and interested in learning the SI joint injection under ultrasound guidance, just let me know, and I'll be more than happy to teach you. I'll show you today the, the approach. But, um, but so there's, so, and if people do dry needling, physical therapists do dry needling, uh, they, you can, or trigger point injections for the physicians, you can actually use ultrasound to see where the, the lung is, which is kind of important, so you don't drop a lung. And you can, you can really get down to the multifidi, and you can, you can see exactly where the needle tip is, which is a really, wonderful thing because then you know that you're not just kind of, please don't drop along when you're doing your, your dry needle. So that being said, let me take, let me take a few minutes and uh, get things set up here and then well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show, give you a tour of the lumbosacral spine on Kylie's back and then I'll open up for questions if, if you have it. If you don't, we'll break early for lunch. Can you, can you see that? I wonder if I guess I can't get it to a, a maximized screen there. Let me just see. That's pretty good. Is it pretty good? Yeah, it's not bad. Okay. Any? How about that? Better. 
Okay. All right. So let me. Um, here we go. So this is this is designed to be interactive. Don't be shy. Uh, let's just let's do this together. So here's a little white. Can you see my arrow? Yeah. The, yeah. So you see that little white dot? Yes. That is my spider's process. All right. That's the top of my head, like I was showing you before. There's a black shadow just deep to it. That's the shadow because ultrasound waves do not go through bone; they bounce off. Yeah. So if I if I slide up a little bit, and now, so now you see. Let me change the depth. It's going to make it a little shorter here. Okay. So now you've got the shadow from the spider's process, though you can barely see it there. But you've got these two little corners on either side. Okay. Those are the facet joints. And you can even see the facet joint a little bit on Carly. Right there, there's a little notch in the bone, and there's a little notch in the bone there. It's very subtle, and you gotta have a you gotta have good imagination to use ultrasound. But it's there, and that's what people will use to uh, do injections. Another another indication to start up would be a, a, a pregnant mother uh, who can't get, uh, say, X-rays, they can't get uh, perhaps MRI. Ultrasound may be a useful tool if you're trying to help her out. Um, so if you go, if I go a little further down, you can see this little, these little white shelves right here. Those are the transverse processes. Okay, so we have spinous process, the articulate processes here, and then you've got the transverse process in the side. This is L5. This is L4, I think. Here's L5. I'm going to go down to the sacrum. I'm going to slide down caudally, down the spine now, and then all of a sudden you get to, you get to uh, this. Here we are at the sacrum. The, the sacrum has a little bit broader shoulders here at the lamina. There's not real lamina there. Spinous process or the, the median uh, crest of the sacrum. Does anybody know what, what this little arrow is over there? Uh, the extremely confident <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, that's the intermediate. That's the intermediate crest of the sacrum. And then, if you go down a little further, you'll see. I don't know if you can see this little. All of a sudden, the bone drops away. Right there is the posterior sacral foramen. Right, right there. That little dip in the bone. Uh, let me see if I can center. Right there. That's where we. That's where we'll sometimes do epidural injections, S1 transfemorals, etc. If I slide a little bit laterally, you'll see a bone that pops up over here. You see a little black shadow. This is the iliac bone right there, and the SI joint actually sits right where this arrow is, right there. So let me just get a little broader view. So here's here's the median here's the median crest over here. Here's the, the intermediate crest, the sacral foramen, and the SI joint is sitting right in this little divot right there. So if you wanted to do uh, an injection, you can do that by with, with ultrasound guidance. And you can, for example, in a pregnant woman, if we had to do an SI injection or something, uh, then uh, we can actually use the ultrasound and we can direct the needle directly into the SI joint right up there. So you can see. That's probably about the, the, the only indication for uh, the ultrasound for the SI joint. If you go, if we go lower on the sacrum, you start to lose the joint. And see right there, I've lost the iliac bone, so the, the joint is gone. I'll go back up. And the bottom of the SI joint is this little tiny, that little tiny ridge right in there. So you have to, let me see if I can change the depth again. Yeah. All right. So, so right here. If you continue to follow the sacrum down, and you follow that median, that median crest here, you'll see it open up, and let me get some more gel. You'll see it open up, and that'll be the sacral hiatus, uh, right, right there, and that's these are the two sacral cornu that that uh, uh, that line the 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 sacral sulcus that we that we use for caudal epidural injections. So for people who want to do caudal. Okay. So you can see how difficult it may it may be to see what you're 
to know what you're looking at. Uh, but uh, but you, you know, once you learn the anatomy, uh, it's actually second nature. If I, I'm going to turn the probe vertically now, so rather than going across the spine, I'm going to go vertical. So I'm going to just flip it 90 degrees, and right here, I'm going to go down, back down to the sacrum, and here you can see the sacral bone right here. Bone tends to be quite white uh, because of the reflection, reflective nature of bone. And then you can see you've got this little bony ridges right here. And we're going to go up. And you can, so this is actually L5. This is uh, L4. And let's see, L3 is, up, is right up here. And you, if you were doing, say, an epidural, you could actually use this to get in between the sponge processes. Right, and, you can, and you can identify the levels. If I change the gain again, I should be the, the depth, and I go a little bit, I go a little bit just lateral to midline. So, so a paramedian approach right here, right, these little ridge of bone here are the lamina. And I'm going to even make it a little bit deeper here. And you can actually see through the spinal canal, and you can see her her, the vertebra, the dura, right, just, just deep to it, right in here. And if I go a little further over, you get, you get to the transverse processes over, over here. These little, these little bumps there. Yep. These are all the multifidi muscles. This should be the, um, the paraspinal muscles over on the side, just parallel to the spine. The, if I go back to a transverse view. And we look at those multifidi muscles, or the their spinals, excuse me. So now we're gonna now we're gonna do a little quiz for all those extremely confident anatomy people. And okay, so what I'm gonna get, let me find a spinous process here. Let me just get up here. Okay. So here's a spinous process right here. You see this peak right here? It's a spinous process. So there's a muscle right over here, this black area right there. What muscle is that? What muscle is that? Multifidi, exactly. That's what it is. Okay. What, okay, and so what muscle would this be over here? It begins with long. Longismus, exactly. And what's the, and then the muscles, if we go further over, to the side, what muscle is, is this over here? The iliocostalis, exactly. Now, the big, the big question is, what muscle is this down here? The QL, quadratus lumborum, sitting over this way. Yeah, right down there. So, and if you go, if you go further down, then you get the iliac crest. Now, the other, the other, so those are. For the therapists in the room that try to activate the multifidi, if you know how to do that, would you let me know? Um, because it's 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 very. I tried to get Kylie to do it yesterday when we were just prepping for this lecture and uh, couldn't couldn't get it to go. So if you have any suggestions, let us know. But you, for those that those that yeah. use what's that? Kegels. Kegels. Okay, so just 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 hold, hold your your <laughs> and then relax. It. And then do it again. And then relax it. Now, Kylie's pretty active. She just, we just won the, uh, the, the softball league, and Kylie was a star. And, uh, she, and even she is having a hard time activating her multifidi. Okay, now for the, for the expert anatomist in the room, what muscle is this? You see that little band right there? There's a little tiny band that's slightly different than the multifidi, which is a little darker. And it goes right along the spine. It goes between the spinal processes. Yeah, interspinalis. Yeah, it probably goes way back to, uh, to uh, school days. But anyway, that little muscle is sitting right along that spine. And um, OK, so if we, if we follow this, this muscle here. theme going across, and so here's, we, once again, here's, this is spinous process here. This is the facet joint here. This, that's, that was the shoulder of my jacket. This is the transverse process. This is my arms. 
If I go deep here, what muscle is sitting right there? Oh, you guys didn't see. Okay, there you go. So what muscle is that right there? Just let me let me go over that. Okay, so spinous process right here, the facet joint right here, the articular process, the transverse process right there. What muscle is this right down here? Ilioso is exactly exactly. And if you if you turn and you look at this in the long axis view, so you can find the transverse processes. Uh, you can see those. You can see them casting shadows right here. And you see this nice striated looking belly. That's, so go ahead and lift your right leg up. And that's the iliopsoas and then relax it. Lift it up. There it is activated. Isn't that cool? I think it's cool. Anyway, so because it's real time, totally safe. I could sit here for, you know, 24 7. Kylie's not going to get a psoas tumor. Um, by doing that. So the other the other use I know that the therapist I was trying to kind of be creative with this creative with this uh, lecture. The other use I think that you know may be helpful for the therapist if I let me just put this on the freeze for a second. If you swing around and you look at for those therapists that are using the uh, using it for abdominal core strengthening, which is what you know we really harp on in the spine world. You, if you start at the spine, you come back this way. Once again, I think you guys are getting the, getting the gist of what's going on. Spinous process here, that little shadow, facet joint, transverse process over here. We're going to slide across the paraspinals, and then you're going to see the, these group of muscles going right over here. All right, here we come, right across. I'm, I'm sweeping around her waist right now. And what? Uh, so. And I'm, I'm going to change the I'm going to change the depth a little bit. All right, so we've got kind of three three layers of muscles here. This is easy. But no therapist can't answer these questions. Um, okay, so what uh, what layer what, what what layer is that? What muscle is that? Transversal abdominis, exactly. Yep. Yeah. And then we then the next layer up is. The internal oblique, and then the, up, the upper layer is the external oblique. Yeah, and so now I trained Kylie on how to activate her her TA, her transverse abdominis. So go ahead and, and do that. Oh, look at that, and then relax it. Do that again, and then relax it. Yeah, beautiful thing. And now you know that she's doing it. Uh, and then the other uses for ultrasounds. I don't know if you can see this popping in right here, another source of potential back pain, and that is the kidney, exactly. That's a kidney in short axis view. If you wanted to look at it in long axis view, you can actually just turn the probe, and that's, that's her kidney as we speak. And then just, just above, the, right next to the kidney, sits, begins with live. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and that's, this is the liver, there's the kidney, uh, somebody has bleeding, just so you know, in the ER world, they look for blood right at this junction, right between the liver and the kidney, called Morrison's pouch. All right, and, okay, so that's, that is a, kind of a quick tour of ultrasound. All right, you can, it's dynamic, you can turn the lights back on, uh, it's dynamic, uh, it's safe, uh, it's immediate, and uh, sometimes it can be helpful when you're, you're just scratching your head. You don't know what's going on. The uh, the other thing we did look at was uh, that that's another non-spine related back pain is uh, dissecting aortic aneurysm, and that's very easy to see. You put it on the belly, and you just look at the size of the aorta. You just run it straight down, and you can it's it's, it's a no-brainer. Okay.